Chapter Sixteen of A Daughter of Today by Sarah Jeanette Duncan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bruce Peary. Lady Halifax and her daughter had met Miss Bell several times at the Cardiffs in a casual way before it occurred to either of them to take any sort of advantage of the acquaintance the younger lady had a shivering and frightened delight in occasionally wading ankle-deep in unconventionality but she had lively recollections in connection with the cardiffs of having been very nearly taken off her feet they had since decided that it was more discreet to ignore janet's enthusiasms which were sometimes quite impossible in their verdict and always improbable the literary ladies and gentlemen whom the ghost of the departed sir william brought more or less unwillingly to lady halifax's drawing-rooms were all of unexceptionable cachet the halifaxes were constantly seeing paragraphs about them in the literary gossip department of the athenian mentioning their state of health their retirement from scientific appointments or the fact that their most recent work of fiction had reached its fourth edition lady halifax always read the athenian even the publisher's announcements she liked to keep in touch she said with the literary activities of the day and it gave her a special gratification to notice the prosperity of her writing friends indicated in tall figures miss halifax read it too but she liked the art notes best it was a matter of complaint with her that the house was not more open to artists new original artists like john kendall in answer to this lady halifax had a habit of stating that she did not see what more they could possibly want than the president of the royal academy and the one or two others that came already as for john kendall he was certainly new and original but he was respectable notwithstanding and they could be certain that he was not putting his originality on with a hearth-brush for the sake of advertisement lady halifax was not so sure about elfrida's originality of which she had been given a glimpse or two at first and which the girl's intimacy with the cardiffs would have presupposed in any case but presently and somewhat to lady halifax's perplexity miss bell's originality disappeared it seemed to melt into the azure of perfect good breeding flecked by little clouds of pretty sayings and politenesses whenever chance brought her under lady halifax's observation a not unreasonable solution of the problem might have been found in elfrida's instinctive objection to casting her pearls where they are proverbially unappreciated and the necessity in her nature of pleasing herself by one form of agreeable behaviour if not by another lady halifax however ascribed it to the improving influence of insular institutions and finally concluded that it ought to be followed up elfrida wore amber and white the evening on which lady halifax followed it up a parisian modification of a design carried out originally by the sparta dressmaker with a degree of hysteria under miss bell's direction she wore it with a touch of unusual colour in her cheeks and an added light in her dark eyes that gave a winsomeness to her beauty which it had not always a cunningly bound spray of yellow stamened lilies followed the curving line of her low-necked dress ending in a cluster in her bosom the glossy little leaves of the smilax the florist had wreathed in with them stood sharply against the whiteness of her neck her hair was massed at the back of her head simply and girlishly enough and its fluffiness about her forehead made a sweet shadow above her eyes she was in a little fever of expectation janet had talked so much about this reception janet had told her that the real thing the real english literary thing in numberless volumes would be on view at lady halifax's 
miss cardiff had mentioned this in their discussion of the arcadia club at which institution she had scoffed so unbearably that elfrida while she cherished the memory of giorgietti had not mentioned it since perhaps after all she reflected janet was just a trifle blind where people were not hall-marked it did not occur to her to consider how far she herself illustrated this theory but as she went down mrs jordan's narrow flights of stairs covered with worn oilcloth she kissed her own soft arm for pure pleasure you are ravishing to-night she told herself Golightly Tick's door was open, and he was standing in it, picturesquely smoking a cigarette with the candle burning behind him. Just to see you pass, he informed her. Elfrida paused and threw back her cloak. How is it? she asked, posing for him with its folds gathered in either hand. Tick scanned her with leisurely appreciation. It is exquisite, he articulated elfrida gave him a look that might have intoxicated nerves less accustomed to dramatic effects then whistle me a cab she said mr tick whistled her a cab and put her into it there was the least pressure of his long fingers as he took her hand and elfrida forbade herself to resent it she felt her own beauty so much that night that she could not complain of an enthusiasm for it in such a bel homme as golightly they went up to the drawing-room together elfrida and the cardiffs and lady halifax immediately introduced to miss bell a hollow-cheeked gentleman with a long grey beard and bushy eyebrows as a fellow-countryman you can compare your impressions of hyde park and st paul's said lady halifax but don't call us britishers it really isn't pretty of you elfrida discovered that the bearded gentleman was the principal of a college in florida and corresponded regularly at one time with the late sir william it is to that said he ornately that i owe the honour of joining this brilliant company to-night he went on to state that he was over there principally on account of his health acute dyspepsia he had it seemed he'd got out of running order generally regularly off the track but i've just about concluded he continued with a pathetic twinkle under his bushy brows that i might have a worse reason for going back what do you think of the meals in victoria's country miss bell it seems to me sometimes that i'd give the whole british museum for a piece of johnny cake elfrida reflected that this was not precisely what she expected to experience and presently the hollow-cheeked floridian was again at lady halifax's elbow for disposal while the young lady whose appearance and nationality had given him so much room for hope smilingly drifted away from him the cardiffs were talking to a rosy smooth-faced round waistcoated gentleman just returned from siberia about the unfortunate combination of accidents by which he lost the mail train twice in three days and janet had just shaken hands with a short and cheerful-looking lady astrologist behind that large person in the heliotrope brocade she's the wife of the daily mercury there's a small sofa janet said in an undertone i don't think she'll occupy it the brocade looks so much better standing no there she goes let us sit down as they crossed the room janet added in another minute we should have been shut up in a russian prison daddy's incarcerated already and the man told all he knew about them in the public print some months ago they sat down luxuriously together and made ready in their palm-shaded corner to wreak the whole of their irresponsible youth upon lady halifax's often venerable and always considerable guests the warm atmosphere of the room had the perceptible charge of personalities 
people in almost every part of it were trying to look unconscious as they pointed out other people tell me about everybody everybody said elfrida hmm, i don't see anybody that is anybody at this moment oh there's sir bradford barker regard him well for a brave soul is sir bradford frida mine a soldier at this end of the century one can't feel an enthusiasm for killing not in the least a member of parliament who writes verses and won't be intimidated by punch into not publishing them and the man he is talking to has just done a history of the semitic nations he took me down to dinner last night and we talked in the most intelligent manner about the various ways of preparing crabs he liked them in five styles i wouldn't subscribe to more than three that little man with the orchid that daddy has just seized is the author of the last of the rulers of india series sir somebody something k c s i my unconscionable humbug of a parent probably wants to get something approaching a fact out of him daddy's writing a thing for one of the reviews on the elective principle for india this week he says he's the only writer on indian subjects who isn't disqualified by having been there and is consequently quite free of prejudice ah <sighs> said elfrida how banal i thought you said there would be something real here somebody in whose garments hem there would be virtue and i suggest the dress coat of the historian of the semitic nations janet laughed well if nearly all our poets are dead and our novelists are too improper to be asked to evening parties i can't help it can i here is mr kendall at all events kendall came up with his perfect manners and immediately it seemed to elfrida that their little group became distinct from the rest more important more worthy of observation kendall never added anything to the unities of their conversation when he joined these two he seemed rather to break up what they had to say to each other and attract it to himself he always gave an accent to the life and the energy of their talk but he made them both self-conscious and wakeful seemed to put them as it were upon their guard one against another in a way which janet found vaguely distressing it was invariably as if kendall turned their intercourse into a joust by his mere presence as spectator as if janet put it plainly to herself reddening they mutely asked him to bestow the wreath on one of them she almost made up her mind to ask elfrida where their understanding went to when john kendall came up but she had not found it possible yet there was an embarrassing chance that elfrida did not feel their change of attitude which would entail nameless surmises you ought to be at work janet said severely to kendall back at barbizon or in the fields somewhere it won't be always june ah would you banish him elfrida exclaimed daintily surely hyde park is rustic enough in june kendall smiled into her face it combines all the charm of the country he began and the chic of the town elfrida finished for him gaily i know i've seen the boot show extremely frivolous janet commented ah now we are condemned elfrida answered and for an instant it almost seemed as if it were so daddy wants you to go and paint straggling grey stone villages in scotland now straggling climbing grey stone villages with only a bit of blue at the end of the dead wind where it turns into the churchyard gate how charming elfrida exclaimed i suppose he has been saturating himself with barry kendall said if i could reproduce barry on canvas i'd go like a shot by the way miss bell there's somebody you are interested in do you see a middle-aged man rather bald thick-set coming this way 
george jasper really elfrida exclaimed jumping to her feet oh thank you the most consummate artist in human nature that the time has given she added with intensity there can be no question oh i am so happy to have seen him i'm not altogether sure kendall began and then he stopped looking at janet in astonished question elfrida had taken half a dozen steps into the middle of the room steps so instinct with effect that already as many heads were turning to look at her her eyes were large with excitement her cheeks flushed and she bent her head a little almost as if to see nothing that might dissuade her from her purpose the author of the alien a moral catastrophe her disciple and a number of other volumes which cause envy and heart-burnings among publishers in the course of his somewhat short-sighted progress across the room paused with a confused effort to remember who this pretty girl might be who wanted to speak to him elfrida said pardon me and mr jasper instantly apprehended that there could be no question of that with her face she was holding out her hand and he took it with absolute mystification elfrida had turned very pale and a dozen people were listening give me the right to say i have done this she said looking at him with shy bravery in her beautiful eyes she half sank on one knee and lifted the hand that wrote the moral catastrophe to her lips mr jasper repossessed himself of it rather too hastily for dignity and inwardly he expressed his feelings by a puzzled oath outwardly he looked somewhat ashamed of having inspired this young lady's enthusiasm but he did his confused best on the spur of the moment to carry off the situation as one of the contingencies to which the semi-public life of a popular novelist is always subject really you are much too good i can't imagine if the case had been reversed mr jasper found himself accustomed as he was to the exigencies of london drawing-rooms awkwardly in want of words and in the bow with which he further defined his discomfort he added to it by dropping the bit of stephanotis which he wore in his buttonhole elfrida sprang to pick it up oh she cried it's broken at the stem see you cannot wear it any more may i keep it a deadly silence had been widening round them and now the daughter of the historian of the semitic races broke it by twittering into a laugh behind her fan janet met kendall's eyes instinctively he was burning red and his manner was eloquent of his helplessness angry with herself for having waited so long janet joined elfrida just as the twitter made itself heard and mr jasper's face began to stiffen with indignation ah miss cardiff he said with relief how do you do the rooms are rather warm don't you think i want to introduce you to my my very great friend miss bell mr jasper janet said quickly as conversation began to hum across the room again elfrida turned to her reproachfully if i had known it was at all possible that you would do that she said i might have waited but i did not know people were still looking at them with curious attentiveness they were awkwardly solitary kendall in his corner was asking himself how she could have struck such a false note and of all people jasper whose polished work held no trace of his personality whose pleasure it was to have no public entity whatever as jasper moved off almost immediately kendall saw his tacit discomfort in the set of his shoulders and so sure was he of elfrida's embarrassment that he himself slipped away to avoid adding to it it was all wrong and ridiculous and she was mad to do it 
thought janet an hour later as she drove home with her father but why need john kendall have blushed for her End of chapter 16